So what we got right now is a little thing called Nochino from our fine friends at Boardroom Spirits. They are lovely people. They are the people who brought us a number of bottles with letters on them. Yes. A. C. For their various ingredients. Yes. Apple, pear, carrot, what else? Beet. Beet. Right, I think we they did A, B, C. We also ABC. did P. We did pear. Pink pears. I have pears too. And now they've given us Nochino. Nochino. Which is not a letter. No, it's a It's word. a whole word. It's a word. Which we like. Shall I read what I got from the, you uh, shall read. From, from the uh, PR folks? Read away. Okay. Uh, Giro just wanted to send you a note to see if you may be interested in a bottle of Boardroom Spirits 2019 Nochino. The team at Boardroom used their Hungarian family's recipe as a take on this hard-to-find-in-the-U.S. Italian walnut-based liqueur. And let me tell you a little bit more about that. You want to pour? Want to I will pour. So I'm thinking we do... I was reading an, a, a review by Greg, Craig LeBan of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Oh, no. Oh, maybe that's maybe that's that's the pour, They right? tricked me. I thought uh, I broke the top. Oh, it's, it's a not, pour. It's a pour. Nice. These are some tricky nice. people here at the boardroom. Very nice. Let's see what we got here. How's a pour? So anyway, Craig LeBan reviewed this. He really liked it. And... Per his article in the Philadelphia Inquirer, the, the fine folks at Boardroom Spirits, Marat, he recommends having this over ice. So as, you, as is usually the case, I like to try it straight, and then we can try it over ice to see how, see how different it is. So I just gave it stuff. a little bit of a short pour. That's okay. Let me just so focus. Since we're trying it twice. A drink so nice, we're going to try it twice. twice. But we're going to find out if it's so nice. Now... You have some more information? Yeah, this, I do. Right? I do. The base alcohol is carbon filtered vodka and barrel aged grape brandy to add complexity and barrel character. The core ingredient green walnuts from Hog, well, H A A G. So I'm going to assume it's Hog Farms in California. Secondary ingredients blend the proprietary spices based off of Shusha Palota, Palotas, a co owner of the distillery. Family recipe in Hungary that they've adapted for their own. The process. Primary infusion is then diluted down with water and sugar and finished with wild clover honey to create a rich, flavorful, and complex liqueur. Suggested uses. An aperitif, a digestif as a substitute for amaro and cocktails, or to amp up whiskey or brandy cocktails. Sounds nice. Yeah, so it should be interesting. So this, so this is made from green walnuts. And green walnuts, so they're not ripe walnuts, I suppose. Right. So they make green walnuts, and we've had things made of almonds and hazelnuts before. Right. So I guess, given enough time and ingenuity, people will distill anything they have handy. Well, I mean, I guess it all goes back to agricultural times, right? Where if you weren't doing something with it, you were basically Cheers. throwing money away. Yeah. Right? Because if it rots, you're, you're not making it. What are we going to do with the leftovers? Right. Let's distill it. I love the smell. The smell is really, really nice. I it's, can't quite. Uh, I can't quite break it down. It smells fantastic, really. It really, it really does. does. It's I mean, not... it, it smells sweet, and I get a nuttiness. I, I can't say whether it smells like walnuts because I don't know what a green walnut and, smells like. And it doesn't appear to be overly viscous. No, the color is a little odd. But it, it seems to be quite dark. The color is a little bit odd. It almost looks like a coffee. And what's the base? Vodka and, uh, and uh, carbon filtered vodka and barrel aged grape barrel -aged. brandy. So maybe the brandy. Enhances some of this, the barrel aging. Maybe that brings out the color. The smell, though. Or what, some what, of the what, secret family ingredients. Yeah, I'm trying to think what they were. They didn't really say what they were, right? But I'm almost getting like that cardamom, like that kind of a smell. So I, uh, it could be like some kind of tea. There's cinnamon. Make it this kind of dark cinnamon. Uh, I can sort of get the cinnamon. And you get a little, maybe a little vanilla. Yeah, they said they also use like a wild honey. So maybe that's also part of the richness. It definitely smells rich. It smells nutty. A lot of herbs, but not super herbally, not like a fernet or anything like that. No, I've had a, a frangelica, mm -hmm. which I'm not a big fan of because it's hazelnuts. And I think the, it's a kind of a one-note wonder. You just get the hazelnut on the nose. Yeah. And I was thinking that this would be similar in terms of the, the nosing. No, this certainly is much there's, more complex. A much, there's a lot of complexity what, here. When they said that it's like an Amaro, I, I get that. I totally get and, that with and, the herbs and, and spices. And I, I think this is like when you get somebody who makes you know, the family gin where they have the 25 secret ingredients they yeah. add to it, that it, it, it changes the complexity because what they make, nobody else uses. Mm -hmm. I like the way it smells. It's very inviting. You're going to go in? I've gone in. It's a little thin. 
Yeah, um, alcohol-wise, I don't know if I mentioned the ABV, but it's only 28%. Yeah. So I don't know what the shelf life on this thing is, how long it lasts. I imagine it'll last for a little bit once you open it. It's a little thin. It's uh, not a lot of heat, again, because the ABV is not terribly high. It's not um, overly medicinal in terms of the quality for the alcohol, but it, it's, it's quite flavorful. And I, I certainly understand their note about using this in a whiskey cocktail. I could see it. Because oh, absolutely. this certainly would with some bourbon replace, or some replace a vermouth. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Turn this into some kind of a, a Manhattan. It has an almost vermouth quality, yeah. but then it's got a sweetness to it. Yeah. Like some of the vermouths are a little bit like have that whiny note. Yeah. You know? So you get a little bit of that, but then you get that little bit of nuttiness. You get the honey coming through. You get a little bit of the spices. So instead of a dry vermouth, you'd use yeah. this, or sweet vermouth, you'd, you'd use this in its place. And again, there's a little bit of drying at the back end, mm-hmm. which I guess is some of that. The, the wine note. Hmm. But it's it's very pleasant. And this is really nice. And I can certainly see that this would be a aperitif or a digestif. It can go either way. Right, right, right. Then you could have to start or to end. It either makes me want to eat or it settles my mm. stomach after a really big meal. One or the other. After I've eaten too much. I could also see this with a nice dessert because of the sweetness. Yeah, I agree. Then you could have this with our ever popular... Panna cotta. Or cheesecake. Or cheesecake. <laughs> Going a, yeah, right. nice, a nice vanilla cheesecake. Mm-hmm. This is very, very nice. It's very, very nice. approachable. And didn't eat ice. And you don't really go for this kind of stuff. No, I'm not a big herbal guy. I don't really, you know, it, 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 I think the sweetness is what gets me. It needs to stay sweet. When it gets to be too herbally, yeah, but too not, sharp. It, but it's not it's not overly, sweet. No, it's not overly sweet. No. Though. I think it's very nicely balanced. No, but I find a lot of the stuff takes it off into more of a herbal note, and there isn't mm-hmm. any sweetness, where no. this certainly has a lot. This is really nice. You Let's want to try it? Let's try it on the rocks. Let's put it over the rocks. I didn't find that it needed ice. I don't think it needs to be cold. No. But we'll, no, no, no. Uh, but we'll see if I'm wrong. I've been wrong once or twice. No. Now, the elusive Craig LeBan. Let me see what he said here. I think I have his review queued up. Uh, and again, said, just a short pour, so that's where. Yeah. Into it twice. True to Boardroom's all natural ways with its other brandies and a few spirits, its Nochino isn't as sweet as some, industrial, some more industrial products. Amari people will love it as a post-meal digestif, but the flavors of that edgy green nut at once vegetal and sweet really come through on every sip, which Mamadov, Marat, the other owner, and I believe Shusha's husband, um, really comes through on every sip, suggests truly opens up when poured over an ice cube. So apparently... Yeah. I've poured it over an ice cube. Uh, 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 very nice. Uh, bravo. Cheers, sir. Cheers. And you got a boardroom glass. Look at I that. Do. Look at that. It's a nice glass. You only focus here. There we go. That's a nice glass. That's nice. And I got my Philly glass. So this is kind of good. We're we're kind of tying it all in. Here we are. You know, local. Put it together with a bow. Yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. And we got some clear ice. Yes, I have frozen water. You are the king of the ice. You know, yeah, it is actually very nice up in the ice. I, and I do agree. I think it opens it up a little bit. You get a little more of the uh, aromatics. Yeah, and that's very nice. It was really good straight. Yeah, I think it's better over us. And a, a lot of the Amaros, you know, typically with whiskey and stuff, I don't usually add ice or water or anything. But the Amaros, because, just because of all the com- complexity and everything, and maybe because they're a lower ABV, they do tend to be a little better over ice. A little more ice. Like Fernet on the rocks, or the Fernet, the, the, the Branca Menta, which is like the mint version on the rocks. You let that sit for a while, and the water just kind of, because it's syrupy. Right. And maybe it's just because of the sugar, it just kind of dilutes it a little bit, so it's not super sweet. It takes it to a different spot. Yeah, it does. It's, it's really unusual. It's really weird how it works that way. Very good. Very nice. I really like this. I mean, I give this, you know, solid A, A, A- on this one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely. really, really good. It's really well done. Absolutely. I, I'm curious to try any cocktails. If we have more time, I would try it in a Mickey Manhattan. If we didn't just go through round, you know, two other rounds. I would, I would also like to know... Some of the secret ingredients. Yeah, it will be nice. I don't that. need to know all of them. Just maybe the first two or three. Mm-hmm. Just to see what it is that I'm probably not aware I'm tasting. Like you noted the cardamom. Maybe. The, some cinnamon, know. some vanilla, something. Right. To see what they're putting in there. But it's a, it's it's very nice. It really is. It's very mm. nice. I like it. So, bravo to the fine folks at Boardroom Spirits. Another great bottle. Thank you for sending this along. And thank you to Food Shelter Public Relations for reaching out. And uh, cheers, folks. Cheers.